Hello, Mastertron Tamer here. I recently started working um, for a new company called Decodable. And Decodable's mission is to make it easier to move data from one place to another. And that's what our product does. Um, I thought it'd be kind of fun um, to do a little tutorial on how you would build a pipeline like that um, in case anybody wanted to do it. Um, anyways, if you look down here, you see the data that we might be getting from various sources. And very often nowadays, we want to get the data into Delta Lake because um, that allows us to use all the cool tools and analysis available with Databricks. Um, it's not always intuitive how to do that, but that's where um, our new product comes into play. It's the missing piece. We put decodable between it as our transit mechanism, and we can move data amongst any of these things that we want to do. A project that I thought would be fun to build together would be a, some analysis of actual real-time Twitter data. We just need to move that data from Twitter to Delta Lake, and then we can do analysis with it in Databricks. So let's see how we'd go about that. So we're trying to go to Delta Lake. Well, the piece that's going to make that happen is decodable. It's going to make that super simple. In this case, the data is coming from a company called Data PM. Data PM has already built the connections to Twitter and a host of other services to make it easier to connect to them. And we'll get that, we'll go through Decodable, and boom, we'll be in Delta Lake. So let's go ahead and head over to the keyboard and we'll work through that together. Okay, um, just a review. We're gonna come from the Twitter API into the Data PM service which has a connector, which is directly connected in to Decodable. We'll then go through our first stream, which is then connected up to the cleansing pipeline. Then we connect through another stream, and then we write out the Delta Lake connector. We've written it out now into Delta Lake, which means we can work with it in Databricks. So just to kind of give an idea of the data source itself, this is a web page from Data, P data PM. You are welcome to go try this out for yourself. Um, like I mentioned before, they have lots of different connections. This one is connected directly up to the Twitter fire hose. And as you can see, it grabs a 1% sample. The data itself, um, if we can take a look at everything that it's pulling, the one that's going to be of real importance to us is down here towards the end. And it's the one that says place. The analysis we're going to do is going to be by country. So we need country code. And as we can see, um, a few of the records have it, but um, it isn't represented in all of the records. But that's fine. This will give us a, um, a sample of what we want. So here we see United States, country code US. So it's a two letter alpha code that we're going to need to pull out of there. But it would not make much sense to bring all of these other records across into Delta Lake that don't have that um, information that we need with the country code because it's not going to be useful for our analysis. So we're actually going to use um, our cleansing pipeline to go ahead and drop the records that are of no use to us whatsoever. And this is potentially, um, it, this is like another 1% sample. So we could be dropping the 99 records that don't have this information. So that could reduce the data that's coming into Databricks by 100 to 1. So that would be pretty slick if we could do that.
So let's go ahead and close it. And I just wanted you to get an idea. They give you the command here, and then there are instructions here for how you would download um, the software that goes, the client that goes with Data PM. So, um, like I said, feel free to um, explore that a little bit more. Let's go ahead, though, and move over to um, Decodable's Web Console. So as you can see here, I have drilled directly into one of the connections. This is the one that is connected up to Data PM, this Twitter REST CONN for connection. You can see we have pipelines, streams, and connections. And I'm going to be following it through because that's actually really easy to do. By over here, it shows us where it's outputting to. But if we wanted to view, view the schema, we could do that. And this should match up with what we were seeing over there at data PM. If we go down, um, we see place. And that was the one that had the country information that we wanted. OK, so that seems to be working. And it's going to output to our first stream, which is Twitter REST as well. What's cool here is that we can actually get a view of the data with the data preview. And again, when we cursor over um, this JSON data, we'll get to the end where we'll learn that um, most of these do not have, oops, didn't want to roll that all the way off, do not have this place information that we want. Like see. So what we want to do is get rid of the records that don't have the place information that we're after. All right. So from here, the next step in our pipeline is to output to the pipeline that's going to connect these together. But it's going to do more than connect. But let's look here. Um, this is where it gets interesting because look at our metrics. This is the data flowing into the pipeline. And then this is the data flowing out of the pipeline. You should have been able to spot that there's a significant difference. And that's because we're dropping the records that we don't need, the ones that don't have that place field, so that um, we can ingest much less data. And of course, process much less data. If you want to see the magic behind all that, it's the SQL statement right here. Um, very straightforward. Um, we can see where it's coming from. We can see where it's going. See, we're going to insert into Twitter REST clean. If we go back to overview, that's where we're going. That makes sense. Then we're selected out the columns that we want. And we're pulling out the timestamp and some other author information. But we're really interested in place because that's the one that's got the country code in it. And as you can see, we're simply using dot notation to pull out place and then the field that's within the place so that we can easily deal with multidimensional JSON files that way. So here we pulled them all out. And then we say from Twitter REST. Well, that makes sense. We go back to our overview. That's where it came from, Twitter REST. All right. And then the magic of filtering out the records we don't need is as simple as a where statement. That's it. We've just said where place is not null. And therefore, we are only promoting the records that meet that requirement. All right. So the next place we want to go from here is out to the stream Twitter REST clean. Now, if we were to look at this data in the data preview in cursor over here to the right, 
where we weren't seeing places in there. They were null before. Now notice we have only records that have place in them. So here we've got the city. Um, we should also have the country. I think that comes before that. Yeah. So there's the country code, Brazil, India, Japan. So we only have the records with the location information, which is what we were after. Um, we again, we see the schema, but we shouldn't see anything new there. All right, from here, we're gonna go ahead and outbound, outbound to our sync. And you notice this is the Delta Twitter sync. And this is where we're going. Um, we see the input. We see how many records we're writing. Um, the schema should now match just the ones that we've selected. And we can look at the path being used. So out we go. And that takes us all the way through. So we have landed that into Delta. We can see it's clicking along right now and sending out those records. So let's see how we'll deal with this over on the Databricks side of things. We could do a simple create table statement. And then we could take a look. and make sure that we um, have the data coming in that we think we do. There we go. Just took us a minute there. And let's take a look at that. We cursor over to the right. We should see the place information with the country code that we're after. That's going to be important for our analysis, and we'll also need this timestamp over here at the right. So um, let's go ahead now that we know that we've got the data. And we can go ahead and stream right out of this delta table and display it. So to set that up, we're going to say spark.readStream, format delta, and load in the same path that we just looked at. Then we got to tell it what we want to do with it. So we'll go ahead and start with that initial data frame. We'll select out create it by. Um, we're going to grab the country code. We do need to convert this to an alpha three, which is what we're doing. And we're going to call it country. We're going to group it by country. And we're going to set up a windowing function here so that we're going to look every 10 seconds at the last two minutes worth of data. So this is a sliding window example. And then the payoff, if we say display this data frame, we'll see a view like this. And let me enlarge this just a little bit because that'll look a little better. Um, so here we go. Um, now we are looking at real time um, tweets being published worldwide. So this is our live pipeline starting um, at the um, Twitter API and ending here in Databricks. If you're unfamiliar with um, the graphing tools in here, they're really quite neat. Um, but when you look at it, where these colors are representing um, the degree, and we, as it updates, as the real data is coming in, we'll see colors like Brazil there just lit a lot darker because apparently um, in that last um, two-minute segment, there was a lot going on in Brazil as far as tweets. Um, and if we look over here, um, we can hover over there, and for instance, we see Right now, the United States has 407, but um, when we get our next window, that should update and change. Give it here just a minute. Sometimes it takes about 20 seconds for it to come through. 
There we go. Now we're at 419. And look at that. We're not having as much action in Brazil as we were before. Um, a lot going on in Saudi Arabia, apparently, too. Um, anyways, it's just kind of fun to be able to look at this. This is real live um, tweets being um, published around the world. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration so you could see how easy it is to put these components together um, and do really fun analysis with it. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to somebody.